Hello friends, when it comes to the engagement of the Chinese economy with developing countries, the most controversial aspect is the huge loan programs. China has pumped hundreds of billions of dollars in loans to developing countries. Poor countries in the past 15 years. Critics have denounced Beijing's overseas lending as a sinister debt trap that gradually turns borrowing countries into economic vassals. However, today the other side of this story has gradually been revealed. China itself is falling into the trap that it has dug for others. Let's find out through the analysis of Professor Misson P, an American specializing in researching issues about China. So why is China falling into the trap of its own creation? Let's say another thing. Why is China being beaten with a stick? Starting with the wars between Russia and Ukraine, as well as high inflation, rising interest rates and a looming recession in the US and Europe, many poor countries are struggling with a terrible economic crisis. The most since the global financial system nearly collapsed in 2008. Although there is no official data on the loans Beijing gives to developing countries, China is now the official creditor. Largest of this group of countries under all lending scenarios, China's actual loans are likely to be significantly larger than most estimates. An investigation into China's foreign loans conducted by Economist Camald, currently chief economist at the World Bank, and a team of colleagues in 2018 showed that the loans had not been China's reports to foreign countries or mainly developing countries, accounting for an average of more than 15% of these countries' gross domestic product. So you can imagine that your family has four people and who also working, the average income of one person is $5,000, so the whole family will have an income of $20,000 a year, and interestingly, your family owes China $6,000, and the interesting thing is that the whole country, every family is like that. That is the situation of the poor countries mentioned above. So does China find any way to collect debt? Can they find a way to deal with a debt crisis of their own making? Let's look at the example of Sri Lanka's economic collapse. This South Asian country's foreign debt has reached $38.6 billion, equal to about 47% of GDP. 10% of this comes from the boss, China. In early 2022, Sri Lanka was unable to repay nearly $7 billion in due debt. After Beijing failed to offer any debt relief measures, in April Sri Lanka decided to temporarily suspend payment of some debts. It's foreign debt pending restructuring, soon after massive protests overthrew the Sri Lankan government. So Sri Lanka is in debt, and China is at risk of losing this debt if the new government does not carry out economic reconstruction and seriously repay debt. Whether their economic reconstruction will be successful or not is already a difficult answer. Whether they can repay China's debt or not is even more difficult to predict in the context of a worsening global economy and many developing countries similar to Sri Lanka are expected to default on their debt, their foreign loans. Many of these countries are countries that have received hundreds of billions of dollars in loans from China, and they will pose an almost impossible challenge for President Xi Jinping. Under Xi's leadership, China has built an image of itself as an alternative to the West, and to do so, it has generously funded risky projects in developing countries. But now China's hundreds of billions of dollars in loans to poor countries are in danger because the strings attached make them especially vulnerable to an economic downturn. Why is that? Let's consider it together. First, while 55% of the loans and grants from Western governments and international financial institutions go to social programs such as health, education, or human assistance, leadership, about 70% of China's loans are for infrastructure, which now in the economic downturn has completed infrastructure projects such as roads, ports, and other infrastructure projects. Power plants will generate less revenue, because when the economy is difficult, there is less freight transport and less electricity consumption for production. So where do these systems get the revenue to repay debt? 
It's like if you lend money to your neighbor to open a restaurant next to the company, but as soon as you open it, the company goes bankrupt, so your neighbor also goes bankrupt. Follow and the end result is that you can't ask for money. Luckily, if you wait for the other guy to buy a lottery ticket and win more than $3 million, there is still some hope. That's the first thing. The second difficulty for China is because China's loans are often collateralized by revenue from natural resources, which means I give you a loan if you can't repay the debt, I will take over. If you take out your oil field, I will suck it up and sell it to clear my debt. However, this is not always a sure deal, because in a country in economic crisis, demand for essential goods, including fuel or other resources, becomes sluggish. Unless China can exploit it itself and bring it back home for consumption, it will be very difficult to collect debt. Thus, it is said that China has dug its own grave, forcing insolvent governments like Sri Lanka to repay loans during the economic crisis would be useless and counterproductive. China said, you will not only lose money, but also lose your reputation in the process. And if China continues to write off the debt of defaulting countries, China will have to suffer huge losses. So China's best option is to apply a multi-pronged approach to be able to both save the image while cutting losses. So what are those branches? First, they must forgive the debt of the poorest countries because these low-income countries in Sub-Saharan Africa account for half of China's loans. So they will be given priority if Beijing plans to forgive part of their debt. The reason to forgive the debt of these countries is especially compelling because they are likely to be most vulnerable to wage crises. Global reality, this will make people respect China. Because no matter what they do for money, if they forgive debt for people in extreme poverty, they are still praised. On the contrary, China's reputation will be so damaged that even jumping into the Yellow River cannot be washed away. If we continue to force countries that already have no bread to eat, they still have to pay their debts. As for the second branch of debt restructuring, China should cut interest rates, temporarily suspend debt repayments and extend loan maturity to prevent the risk of continuous defaults in the short term. Understand specifically that if you have difficulties now, I will force you to repay the debt. I will reduce the interest rate, I will wait for you to recover economically and then pay me in installments. Well, it's a little overdue, but I can still understand because I'm good. The third branch is to coordinate with other creditors around the world. As the world's largest official lender, China holds great influence if it can use the debt relief program to encourage debt relief. If other lenders do the same, China could lead an international effort to help developing countries weather the global economic storm. As a result, this could be a historic opportunity for China to demonstrate its international leadership and, if it is skillful, once again turn a disaster into a blessing, both a disaster for others and a blessing for others. Me. Thus, Lending too much and targeting infrastructure development for foreign countries has caused China to face huge debts. When the global economy goes down due to war and COVID, will China recover? Let's discuss guys. Thank you for watching the video. Hello and see you again.